Uh, all right, I'm back. Well, I was rudely interrupted, so we're going to back it up a bit. And let's go. Thing. Oh, I'm going to get this guy the fuck out of here. I'm going to get him exiled because I'm going to testify against him and ensure his execution and then smuggle him out. I wish I could bring the book into this. That's did D&D help you out on that one? Oh, D&D did help me out because he's kind of forced By to do Jamie. it in the book. Yeah, And it, even in the show, they kind of imply, oh, it's a, it's a... You never told me why you set me free. Your brother asked me to. Would have said no. <laughs> Refuse the Kingslayer, a dangerous proposition. Not as dangerous as releasing me. But he also says, I believe that you're valuable. I believe that you have well, a, a purpose. Well, he uses it to his own, his own advantage. If this is going to happen, I might as well take advantage of it. Right. What would you say is more lucky? Having a high-born girl fall in love with you or <laughs> betting on a, a, a young girl that had never been to Westeros that hatches three dragons, happens to survive through the, to, to build a huge army right. of, of Dothraki and take over. Like, Well, I don't think he bet on her until about season four. But I it was think, his only choice at that point. I don't think Varys necessarily had any plans in season two or season three. He was kind of helping Tyrion. He thought, L let me form a relationship with Tyrion because this can be a very valuable ally moving forward if Daenerys pans out. If she does accrue her armies and her dragons grow to full strength. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say none of that happens. Let's say Daenerys doesn't either, A, doesn't even have dragons, or B, some along where this dangerous road she's been on dies. What's his play then? I don't know. I'm not as smart as Varys. But I'm, he would have a plan. <laughs> I'm pretty confident in saying that he would have a backup plan. But there's just so many unknowns. Littlefinger knows exactly what's going to happen. and That's why it's almost hard to compare them because they're playing different games. If Varys was playing the same game as Littlefinger, I think it would be more interesting. Yeah, I have the advantage here on this argument, like, just trying to map it out, is because I know what Littlefinger wants. I don't think you really know what Varys wants. Right. I, at this point, it's in the books, I think I know what he wants. Yeah, that's uh, I, that's a great argument for if we do a book Varys versus Littlefinger. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's the better argument. I think we should do that in a part two. We'll do it for Winds of Winter. Winds of Winter, right. But in the show, it's see, I, and I kind of like show Varys better because I kind of he's still a complex character, but he is fighting for good. It's like you said, they're playing the same game, but they're they're playing it for different ends. The selfish motivation just tells you so much more about a character, and their moves are so much more interesting when it's for their to benefit themselves. Yeah, well, Littlefinger is the more interesting character. Like you said, you still don't you kind of know what Varys wants, but there's still that flicker of doubt with Littlefinger. Everybody knows what he wants now. That's what he's played all of his cards, and everybody sees his hand now. Everybody knows that you can't trust Littlefinger. And he's put himself in such a precarious situation by the beginning of season seven, where Littlefinger's plan really fell apart was when he married Sansa Stark to to Ramsay Bolton. That was the dumbest thing he ever did. Thinking it, fr thinking he about didn't it know from Ramsay. Littlefinger's perspective, it kind of makes sense. When Sansa's still at the Vale with uh, Littlefinger, look at his position, where he's become. He rose to Lord of Harrenhal and Lord Protector of the Vale while holding the key to the North with him. He gave up the key to the North to the Boltons. Well, yes, I think there's two different ways you can look at it. I mean, I guess, obviously, he didn't see John coming down south, but it's impossible. His whole plan was, I'm going to marry Sansa to the Boltons, then the Lannisters are going to think the Boltons committed treason by marrying Sansa Stark, because he, she was still married to Tyrion. So then Cersei gives Peter Baelish the leave to invade the North with the Knights of the Vale, and then he'll be named Warden of the North. That was his plan. Yeah, But he did underestimate that the North is still obsessed with the Starks, and there was one Stark up North that he completely uh, disregarded, Jon Snow. He it's a brilliant to, play. He wants to have the But people say that it was stupid, but I, I don't think it's stupid. I think it was a brilliant play to marry Sansa to the Boltons. It just, it's just ugly to see what mm -hmm. she has to go through, and right. then it's, it doesn't sit well. So it's you a obviously, bit lecherous. You obviously okay, it's a brilliant play. It is a brilliant play. But... What made it stupid was the fact that he did not know Ramsey. It was the first mistake he ever made by doing something, not knowing who a person is. Usually Littlefinger knows exactly what he's doing and exactly the person that he's dealing with. But he knew nothing about Ramsey. So he did it with a strategic play in mind. And then he had to switch things up after he found out, oh shit, Ramsey's a psychopath. And now my whole plan is messed up because my plan is um, for Sansa to uh, play the game and take back Winterfell and learn the game. 
um, so that I could step in, marry Sansa, become Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. That was the plan. But that plan fell apart because Ramsay um, is a psychopath. He didn't know that. He um, Ramsay killed his dad. He killed Roost. Um, and then, and then, um, Sansa had to escape. He didn't even try to get Sansa. He, he tried to go and get Sansa. Let me rephrase that. Rephrase that. He did try to go and get Sansa, um, by convincing, um, what's the name of that little boy again? That was Lord of the Vale at the time to convince that clown to go and he, he did he did bring some some um some veil men and he did I, I i'm having a hard time remembering what happened i remember they was they, they were close to winterfell somewhere there um or am i remembering things in the wrong order i'm trying to remember here but it's really slipping me right now but you guys can let me know in the comment section because I'm trying to remember what, how, I'm trying to remember what happened before what. Did he, is it after, did he try to go and get Sansa after she left? Or was it before? After she already escaped with Theon. I'm trying to remember when he ended up um, close to Winterfell at that, um, what is it? Um, <sighs> what's the name of that place again? I, I don't remember the name of it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. He ended up down there, um, with the army. I don't know what he was waiting on. I, I don't remember it. Oh my God. These things are slipping me because, um, it's been a while since I've seen anything. Um, it, it's been a while. You know, uh, usually I remember this stuff, but, but anyways, man, that was pretty interesting, um, what he was talking about, but I do believe that that was the mistake that he made because he didn't know anything. I talked about it a lot when I was reacting to, um, to the show, you know, because I was looking at it like little finger is putting himself is the first mistake he have he ever made by not knowing who Ramsey is and, and it screwed up his plan. So it was the one bad move, you know? Obviously, don't like Littlefinger for that, but you got to remember, Littlefinger doesn't necessarily care about Sansa. He cares about the North. He cares about what her name means. I mean, you can go over and say, oh, we love Catelyn, and Sansa reminds us of Catelyn. If Sansa reminds him of Catelyn, then he's going to think the same thing. I couldn't get someone like that. I want to be in a position where I'm powerful enough where it makes sense to happen just because that's what he wants. He just wants power. And that move works out if Jon Snow doesn't come back. Well, I think he kind of has two plays, depending on what he wants to do. He can either join the Boltons and the North and the Vale together and take care of a diminished Lannister army. Basically, the whole South is in complete shambles right I now. I think the smarter move would have been to fight the Boltons, though. Because even if well, you... He can, I think he, he would have a plan for them as well. He, you don't go and do something right, like yeah. that unless you know. Well, you just keep them wardens of the North. If Littlefinger can take the South with them, Littlefinger's the king, you know, you guys go back up North. The North is yours. Yeah, you know, but everyone... I, I, I think a lot of, like, a misconception that he does everything he wants Sansa by his side he wants to be with Sansa no he, he doesn't care about Sansa no he doesn't that is a misconception I think he's more he needs her for the name and what she represents but Littlefinger's position in season six has become chaos we even said in a couple of our previews he's the one character we think might die in season seven Varys on the other hand Varys had a very successful season six he's the one who um he alerts Tyrion about who's funding the Sons of the Harpy so Tyrion is able to form a truce and then he goes and forges an alliance with House Martell and House Tyrell. So Varys and Littlefinger. I do. I kind of believe that <clears throat> that Littlefinger wants Sansa. Though. Like I think he I may not love her, but I think he wants to be with her. You get what I'm saying? Um, the kiss. You know what I'm saying? He, he kissed her twice in the show. I think. I think it was twice because he tried. He, he. I think he tried. He tried to kiss her again. When they were in Winterfell, if you, if he was, if if he was still trying to play a game against Sansa, at that point, man, he's a, 
he's an actor for the ages, man. Actor for the ages. That's crazy. Back this up a bit. Then he goes and forges an alliance with House Martell and House Tyrell. So Varys and Littlefinger, when they have that conversation about chaos is a ladder, all the chaos that Littlefinger has created has benefited Varys. So while you say that Littlefinger is more hands-on, he's manipulating people, Varys is playing the shadows. He's waiting for things to unfold, and then he makes his move. And his move hasn't changed for the past two seasons. If that's your point that Littlefinger created this mess so Varys can clean it up, basically. All right, so the last time I was trying to remember, what? I don't remember this conversation. This is the conversation I was trying to remember if this was... Because I remember... Like, this was when they dis they decided to go and help Sansa, right? I'm pretty sure this is it. I'm pretty sure that this is the scene when he came back and he brought the, 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 um, the bird for Robin, right? And I think it was a... Uh, what was it again? I'm trying to remember. It doesn't really matter. But I know this is a scene I was trying to remember... Um, if this was him when they decided to go get to go help Sansa, um, I don't remember what season this this was. I think this was season six, if I'm if I'm correct. I think this was season six. Um, this is decided. I was trying to remember, guys, but if you guys know what I'm talking about, then you'll understand where I'm coming from. I'm just having a I having. A little bit of problem pulling this information out of my brain right now. Let's jump back into it. You could say there's no, there'd be no Varys without Littlefinger. Yeah, I think Littlefinger has definitely benefited Varys. <laughs> I know, but without Littlefinger, yes. I'm just saying, with Littlefinger's, without Littlefinger, you can argue that Varys might have botched the whole thing. No, I think it would have been. If, if, if the plan, wait, if, the, if Littlefinger didn't escalate everything and he waited in his plan and he, he bet on Viserys and they had the slow burn, they had time to help build the, not necessarily have to rush to Westeros, Viserys might still be alive, and then we all know that would have been a terrible choice. There's no dragons, there's no Daenerys, there's just Viserys. You well, know. Varys is high risk, high reward. Littlefinger is, he, he's basically making it up as he goes, and he's brilliant at doing it. Like you said, the, the Littlefinger always has a backup plan because he spreads his cards, he spreads them thin. If one plan doesn't work, he can just go to another plan. The Varys is, he's got one plan. He's got one plan that he's had for a couple of seasons, and it worked out. Start of season seven, it appears Varys is in a better position. I'm just saying, just the way they played the game throughout the entire series, Littlefinger, I think, played the better game. He was more hands-on and had potential to rise to the top. Where Varys, yes, he got very close. Yes, rise to the top or die trying. Where Varys is more hands-off and a lot of luck to do with it. Completing his plan until Daenerys burns down the whole country. Well, in the show, <laughs> I don't think he'll become king. I think in the books, there's a very good chance that he can become king. I really do. That well, he'll, he's the one sitting on the Iron Throne when Daenerys comes. Even if he gets the Iron Throne for a second, he, he won. will have won. Yeah. yeah, he won. But I think we can both agree that Tywin is the best player in Game of Thrones. So all in all, these are the two best <laughs> players in Game of Thrones. You can really say it's a show about them. I mean, if you break it down, they really manipulated everything in the show. That's yeah, happened if so you far. really do. It'd be hard pressed to find an event that didn't wasn't indirectly caused by either Varys or Littlefinger. Comment below. Tell us who you think has played the game better, um, Varys, Littlefinger. I personally think Tywin is better than both of them. Have you ever read the theories that Podrick is really pulling the strings? Yeah, I think that. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so that was very interesting. Um, um, I had to, um, I got a phone call in the middle of recording, so I had to attend to that phone call. Hope you guys don't mind too much. I might upload this in two parts, so if you see two parts, hey, it is what it is. I might just put it together and render it out, but that might take forever, and I don't want to do that. So thank you guys for watching once again, man. Um, just let me know what you think in the comment section, and I will respond accordingly. You already know who I think. I said it in. Um, I really do think that Littlefinger played the game better, um, even though he's dead now. But at the same time, Varys did play it pretty good. He said a lot of things in motion, protecting Daenerys, all of this other stuff that he was doing. Um, you know. And was Varys the one that sent Jorah? 
that's one of the things that came up and I was like, I was trying to remember if it was Varys that sent Jorah because um, I know it was the small council that sent him. Um, I'm trying to remember. I'm oh, it's so confusing sometimes because I'm I'm pretty sure that it was that it was Varys because even though Varys was protecting her and if he was the one that manipulated the whole thing with Barristan getting there and everything like why did he send Jorah did he foresee Jorah becoming falling in love with her did what was it you know so if it is the small council that sent Jorah Varys would know about it right Varys would know about it um Varys would know about it because he's the one that um, that Robert asked, right? Robert asked him, is this being taken care of? And he's like, well, this and that and whatever, you know. So if he was protecting Daenerys at the same time, I mean, it, it's so weird. The situation is so weird because I'm pretty sure that it, it was him that Robert went to and was like, um, what is going on? Why is the Targaryen girl not dead yet? And he's like, oh, we've set some things in motion, but there's been uh, some complications or something like that. I don't remember. But in any case, I have tons of things on my mind. And that's the reason why a lot of times I draw blanks when it comes on to stuff. Because there's so much information. So much information on Game of Thrones. So much things you have to remember. All that great dialogue from those early seasons, man. You have to remember them. And the more you talk about it, the more you remember stuff. You know, so... But, you know, I got the greatest community here. So I'm not worried about it. You guys will let me know, regardless, explicitly you will let me know where I messed up and what I was trying to remember. You guys can lay out the events for me. Help me to remember, okay? So thank you guys for watching. If you have a different opinion than mine, that's fine. Put it in the comment section of who played the game better if you think Varys did over Littlefinger, and that's okay. There's tons of so much um, debates that you can have about this show it, it just gets out of control sometimes so thank you guys for watching man really 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 appreciate you guys supporting these videos thank you guys for watching and remember to subscribe hit that notification bell leave a like on the video and also leave a comment in the comment section you already know i told you what i want comments about so comment uh uh ongoing you already know who it is it's your boy terabyte reacts and peace